welcome, uh, good morning, uh, participants from the Netherlands, and good afternoon, the participants from uh, Indonesia. Welcome to all speakers and participants of the launch of Historic Urban Landscape Quick Scan Methods Handbook for Indonesian University Lectures. My name is Hasti Tarekat from Heritage Hands on Amsterdam, and I will be the host of today's event. This event is to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the UNESCO recommendations on historic urban landscape, or for short, usually called HUL. This handbook is a joint product of Indonesian and Dutch knowledge and expertise, and at the same time, based on UNESCO HUL approach as adopted by the member states in 2011. Cooperation started with workshops in Muntok in 2018 and Banjarmasin in 2019. Uh, the cooperation uh, partners from Indonesia are represented by Universitas Indonesia or University of Indonesia, Institute Pertanian Bogor or IPB University, and Universitas Trisakti or University of Trisakti, supported by the Directorate General of Higher Education, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, the Republic Indonesia. From the Netherlands is represented by the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands and Heritage Hands-On. Today we have a program started with uh, remarks from some institutions and then presentations and then we, we, we have uh, reviewers and then uh, we are going to officially launch the handbook. It's, a, it's quite a compact uh, program. Let's start our program by inviting the first remarks from the Dean of Faculty of Engineering Universitas Indonesia or University of Indonesia, Dr. Insinyur Hendri D.S. Budiono, Masters of Engineering. Go ahead, please, uh, Pak Hendri. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Hasti. Uh, nice uh, to meet uh, you all. Uh, good morning for uh, our guests and audience in Netherlands and Europe, and good afternoon for our guests and audience in, in Indonesia. It is a honor for me to give a special remarks and also welcoming all of you who attend this special occasion of the book launching of Historic Urban Landscape, or we can call HUL. Quick Scan Method Handbook for Indonesian University Lectures. That is published by the Department of Architecture, Faculty of Engineering, Universitas Indonesia. First of all, I would like to give a high appreciation to all writers and all people behind the publication of important books who come from different university and institutions in Indonesia and the Netherlands. Bufera Damayanti from uh, IPB University Bogor, Bu Hasti Tarek, Bu Heritage Hanson, Mas Ridwan Kurniawan from Universitas Indonesia, Mrs. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Ross Bergen from RCI Netherlands, and Mr. Peter Timmer from RCI Netherlands, and Pak Punto Wijayanto from Trisakti University. Uh, Jakarta. I'm really amazed and appreciate this creative work that will enhance and enrich the rest, the rep repertory of teaching materials of historic urban landscapes in Indonesia universities. I have to say congratulations for writer team, hence work after almost two years in making this plan become reality. Also, I would like to thank and give my special uh, gratitude to RC in Netherlands, the Cultural Heritage Agency in Indonesia, who is represent, represented by Mr. Jen Paul Corten. RCE has been keenly supportive for funding 
the writing and publication of this handbook. Thank you very much. But anyway, for your information, recently, two, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I met uh, the ambassador of Netherlands uh, and uh, the uh, chairman of uh, district and uh, depot. Uh, we, we discussed uh, about uh, how to uh, re do, do revitalization uh, old depot because uh, depot heritage. So uh, thank you very much for the support. Also, thank you very much for the for Ministry of Education and Culture, Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia, especially through Director of Learning and Student Affairs, Professor Aris Naidi, who consistently support the publication of this handbook. Unfortunately, Prof. Aris Naidi, who will join with us this afternoon, cannot attend this book alone because at the same time, has, uh, he has uh, to attend the national meeting in Manado. However, you will still be able to gather with, virtually with us through the video recording of this speech will be soon after this. I also would like to welcome and give thanks and appreciation to UNESCO office in Jakarta. It's uh, uh, very supportive and will help introduce this handbook to international audiences. Thank you very much uh, for Ms. Mo Chiba, Chief of Culture Unit UNESCO office in Jakarta. I also would like to thank the reviewer of this handbook, include Ibu Dr. Eng Titin Fatima from Universitas Tarumanegara, Ibu Nani Kohgrata MLA from Udayana University, and Ibu Dr. Nur Hayati Arifin from IPB uh, University. Ladies and gentlemen, I myself from engineering background. Mechanical engineering, uh, precisely. Talking about culture, even in relation to cultural landscape, is something new, but also interesting and challenging. Engineering and technology is very broad of study. There are an authentic few points of on it. However, it we look at the roots meaning of the word technology that comes from the word technology. From Greek, we can see that the word refers to skills or art. Techno is a Greek word that denotes knowledge and discipline in producing something. Let me relate this full from techno with my hobby as a coffee enthusiast. Yeah, actually, I'm a faculty of engineering, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, I see that the uh, the dean is uh, my uh, second job. My first job is a uh, barista. It's a joke. The philosophy of a coffee always struck into my mind. Coffee grew in various areas in Indonesia. The spread of coffee plantation throughout the region produced many coffee brands from Indonesia and that internationally well known as a coffee gayo, coffee lampung, coffee bangka, coffee toraja. Kopi Bali, Kopi Solok Rajo, etc. Coffee plantations really uh, shows the cultural landscape of Indonesia. Many coffee enthusiasts in Indonesia will agree with me that the coffee is not only a common drink, but is it, it is a culture that becomes a lifestyle and habit that influence our city life, include politics as well. Therefore, by bringing the coffee culture and uh, at the same time also celebrating the 10th anniversary of UNESCO Historic Urban Landscape, I would uh, like to congratulate the launching of this uh, handbook, which represents a step forward in attempt to achieve sustainable, sustainable development of our historic city, especially through historic urban landscape approach. Again, many thanks to the organizer of this handbook uh, launching, especially student from Master Program Department of Architecture, Universitas Indonesia, and other people who work behind the screen, such as uh, from RCE, UI, IPB University, Trisakti University, Tarumanegara University, Heritage Hand-On, as well uh, as all 
the participants of this event that I cannot mention one by one. My highly appreciation to all of you. Thank you very much. Delighted topic. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to Miss Her. Hasti. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Hendry. Sorry. It's no. good. It's now. It's good to listen the story about the coffee and uh, the dean of faculty, uh, who is also a barista. That's a very special in the world, I think. The second one, I would like to welcome uh, the the organizing to uh, switch on the video. Uh, the remark from Prof Professor Aris Junaidi, PhD the Director for Learning and Student Affairs, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology of the Republic of Indonesia. Please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon to all of you, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor for me to be here as part of the great initiation in urban landscape uh, studies. Why do I call it a uh, great initiation? Since the literacy of historic urban landscape has been hibernating for quite some time. This book is like an oasis for the learner, uh, lecturer, researchers, or urban landscape also for. I want to congratulate the remarkable writer, Ms. Vera Damayanti, Ms. Hasti, Tarikat Dipo Wijoyo, Mr. Kemas Ridwan Kurniawan, Ms. Jacqueline Rosbergen, Mr. Peter Timo, and as well as Mr. Punto Wijayanto for the work of this inspiring book. Quote from John Gettner said, A writer's ideas are the thing he or she care about. I believe this book contains on the patient and knowledge from the writer we are proud of. I have read at glance this book and was impressed by the content. As I mentioned before, Historic Urban Landscape, Quick Scan Method, a handbook for Indonesian university lecturer is like an oasis for urban landscape studies. Indonesia is a country with cultural richness and diversity in which its urban landscape become a significant representative of the cultural civilization. This book will provide many ideas and insight related to the study of the urban landscape, and of course, can make a real contribution to the development related to urban landscape studies. Indonesia has more than 80 universities that offer urban landscape mayor in various study program in the urban spatial cluster or architecture studies with the number of students reaching approximately 15,000 students. This handbook seeks to become an alternative for lecturer from a reference major in conducting learning tools. The handbook also offers an interdisciplinary approach to running program or activities pertinent to civilization challenges and aligning with national higher education policy. The handbook can be a reference for project-based and collaborative learning. And this book can also be enjoyed by all people who are interested in the fit of the urban landscapes. Historic Urban Landscape Quick Scan Method and book for an university lecturer is a collaborative work between University of Indonesia, IBB University, the University of Trisakti, the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands, and Heritage and On. We appreciate this collaboration and look forward for another fruitful cooperation between Indonesia and the Netherlands. Once again, congratulations to our team behind this remarkable book, which enriched the literature of urban landscape studies we are waiting for the next great uh, projects. So thank you so much for your attention. Okay. Uh, the next one, I will welcome uh, Dr. Anders uh, Shampol Koten, represents the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands. Shampol Koten, the screen is yours. 
Thank you, <coughs> Hasti. Okay, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, nice to see you all here gathered uh, together uh, for this occasion. Um, I do not have a presentation to share. Um, I'm not sure if everyone can see uh, my screen. Yeah, so now I think I'm fully screened. Then you can even see me better. Uh, in this a rather dark morning in the Netherlands, it's a bit gray. And uh, as a contrast to, uh, I presume, a sunny Indonesia. Well, okay, let me start. This year, 10 years ago, or to be more precise, this month, 10 years ago, the member states of UNESCO gathered for their 36th general conference, adopted the recommendation on the so-called historic urban landscape approach. It was the result of a long lasting and not always easy process of negotiations between heritage professionals, policy officers and decision makers. Today, 10 years after, we may observe that all this was not in vain. The report being presented today is one out of many efforts that are evidence of Hull's relevance today. The Hull, to be short, aims to conserve historical features for future generations. Reasons for conservation are many today. One is the fact that we can hardly afford the demolishment of built structures any longer for reasons of embodied energy and embodied natural resources. But there are also economic, social, and of course, also cultural arguments for conservation, be it tangible or intangible features. The Hull provides a framework for this, for this objective of societal conservation, as we may call it. it. It not only shows the way to embed conservation in spatial planning and urban management, it also relates the tangible to the intangible heritage. Besides, it promotes the inclusion of all relevant stakeholders in decision-making and governance. And last but not least, Hull perceives heritage no longer as a static object, but as a dynamic subject, meaning that heritage has the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. The Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands has always been supportive to the process of, process of establishing the whole, since it largely refers to our own practice in the Netherlands. The agency is also supportive in disseminating the whole approach, and we intend to do so in the future. We hope this report, as presented today, will be helpful in this respect. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Paul Cotten, from the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands. Thank you. And the next, I would welcome Ms. Mo Chiba, the Chief of Culture Unit from UNESCO Jakarta office. Please, Mo, Mo Chiba. Good morning from the Netherlands. Good and afternoon. good afternoon from Jakarta. Yeah. It's actually okay. not sunny, it's rainy. <laughs> Just to disappoint. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Too yes. Bad. Too yes. Bad. Thank anyway, you for um, being with us today. No, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. So ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, uh, Buhasti, Pak Hendry, and of course, uh, Jean-Paul. I hope you are doing all well and safe. Um, once again, thank you very much for inviting UNESCO to the launch of this whole quick scan method. Um, as Buhasti mentioned, um, the initiative is very timely because 2021 is the 10th anniversary of this UNESCO Historical Urban Landscape Recommendations. Well, the cities keep evolving and very fast. And I think this is particularly so in Asia where the urban areas keep really expanding and expanding as opposed to, um, let's say, European countries where the population is shrinking. So the challenge of Asian cities in maintaining their original heritage values seems to be even bigger. And the whole recommendation is probably even more relevant for Asian cities nowadays. Although the original UNESCO recommendation probably has emerged more from the European practice of urban heritage management. Well, by its uh, intergovernmental nature, UNESCO recommendations and guidelines 
tend to be very generic because we try to fit larger possible denominators. So when it was adopted in 2011, I've often heard complaints that was too conceptual and vague to be practical. And the uh, existing case studies were often uh, quite often from Europe, so it was not at that time applicable or inspiring for the Asian cities with different types and scale of challenges. However, 10 years down the line, and as, as Jean-Paul mentioned, I also observed that a larger group of heritage experts now adopts the concept. And to our pleasure, more, uh, more and more case studies are available from Asia, and just like Muntok or Banjar Masin in the publication you're going to launch this afternoon, well, this UNESCO popular 1972 World Heritage Convention uh, actually took at least 20 years to have a wider participation of the state parties. It's very popular, but it's, we had to wait till 1990s to have you know, this dynamic that we, in, we see today in this convention. I also observed that another UNESCO convention, um, let's say the 2005 Convention on Diverse Cultural Expression, also took 10 years to have its clear direction so um, likewise, it seems natural that our HUL recommendation require also 10 years to mature. And of course, the credit goes to you, the experts in the field. You gave life to this UNESCO HUL recommendations by adding your reflections and experience and making it relevant to the local context. So thanks to your effort, this Full or the HUL recommendation is grow and, and has its own life. And your full quick scan method, I say, is the proof. So I hope that through this publication, there'll be more uh, cities from Indonesia and also Southeast Asia participating in this historic urban landscape management. The diversity of experience from the different regions will enrich the World Heritage Convention, its dynamics, and of course, its recommendations. So we really count on people like you to keep flagging various local contexts so that UNESCO recommendations and tools remain relevant and not just a conceptual you know, text. So once again, thank you very much for inviting UNESCO to the launching event. Uh, I really look forward to knowing more about your work. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement, Mochiba. We, we still uh, need to uh, work more, but... Uh... Uh, one step at a time. To all speakers, invitees, and participants, uh, now uh, before we begin with the presentations from all the writers, we, we would like to have a memorable um, event uh, by making a collective picture. So for those uh, of you who uh, would like to be in the pictures, please switch on uh, your camera and the organizing committee uh, will make a, a picture. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Blasti. I'll be helping uh, taking the picture if everyone could turn on their camera. Yes. You say one, two, three, like in the real life? Yes. Uh, I'm uh, waiting for everyone to get ready. It seems uh, some of them still uh, adjusting their cameras. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me take uh, the first page. There is two page. So uh, let me count down. One, two, three. Okay, that's the first page. Uh, in a moment. Okay, second page. One, two, three. Okay, thank you everyone for your participation. Thank you, thank you very much. He is one of the volunteers who helped us uh, today. Thank you very much to all the volunteers. You are great. Thank you. Now we are going to continue to the programs about presentations from uh, the writers, uh, the compilers uh, of this handbook. The first one is... Uh, Punto Vijayanto is a lecturer of architecture department of uh, Universitas Trisakti or University of Trisakti. He's going to deliver his views about uh, 
the historic urban landscapes in Indonesian context. Please go ahead, Punto. Yes, thank you, Ibu Hasti. Mbak Anissa, could you help me to share the screen? So greetings for all participants. Very good afternoon and also very good morning yeah, for Xiang Paul. And especially for all uh, teachers yeah, uh, and university uh, lecturers, perhaps. Happy Teacher's Day. So not only you are gathered now to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the recommendation on historic urban landscape, but also this launching event is also uh, our gift yeah, for all teachers, university lecturers. After this session, after my presentation, uh, you might also download and read the handbook. But before that, allow us, me and other writers who jointly prepare the handbook, will share some information about the handbook. Uh, the whole, especially the whole quick scan method, the process, and also two case studies. I will be the first to present the content of our uh, handbook. And please, next slide. So the UNESCO recommendation on the historic urban landscape adopted in 2011, so exactly 10 years ago, on November the 10th. It is an important milestone and it is recognized cultural heritage and sustainable urban development as uh, being intertwined. The definition of historic urban landscape is the urban area understood as the result of a historic layering of cultural, natural values and attributes extending beyond the notion of historic center or ensemble of uh, to include the broader urban context and its geographical setting. I will not uh, share or explain further about uh, the definitions and etc. because you can also read it by yourself in our handbook. Uh, but next slide, please. I would like to emphasize that if we further learn, Mbak Anissa, next slide, please. Yeah, the whole approach, we will find that the conservation system in Indonesia, according to our uh, conservation law, has similarity with the recommendation on historic urban landscape. So if we learn about historic urban landscape, we do the conservation based on this approach. We actually uh, we use whole historic urban landscape approach as an instrument yeah, to implement our conservation law. Yeah, for example, According to our law, we have to pay attention to the involvement of community. We have to involve financial and regulatory systems. Those uh, tools that are uh, mentioned in historic urban landscape recommendations are also already mentioned in our conservation law. Next, please, Mbak Anissa. So following the recommendation on historic urban landscape, the way we see our heritage site is no longer the same. We don't see not uh, only the monuments or isolated objects yeah, with high value, but also we see the relations between the objects with people and its environments. Yeah, that's what is the difference yeah, between before and after the historic urban landscape. You can also see yeah, by yourself in the handbook and how uh, we have some uh, case studies yeah, about that. Next, Mbak Isa. Whole approach has been introduced in Indonesia in the last 10 years. Yeah. One of the first efforts to introduce historic urban landscape uh, approach was an exhibition in Jakarta, organized by UNESCO Jakarta, and we are very happy that Ibu Moichiba also uh, joined us yeah, in this launch. And then Government of Jakarta, and then Jakarta Old Town Revitalization Corporation, or JOTRC, and WITRAP uh, on February 2015. Before the exhibition, the late Ron Van Ors from WITRAP uh, who were the initiator of uh, historic urban landscape, visited Jakarta. He had proposal to include Jakarta as one of pilot projects of the whole approach implementations. Yeah, next slide, Mbak Nanisa. And in initiatives to introduce whole for Indonesian audiences were made by heritage organizations and universities. Yeah, for example, the translation of a booklet, New Life of Historic Cities, into Nafas Baru Kota Bersejarah by UNESCO Jakarta. And then a joint research between Cultural Heritage Agency, RCA, yeah, with a lecture from University Kairun, and then proceedings with uh, the result is a proceeding under the volcano, and then workshop by Pan Sumatra Network for Heritage Conservation in 2018, and then also at 
just recently a book published by lecturers from ITB, Pak Wijaya and uh, Pak Arif Sarwo Wibowo. Next slide. Hul also is also part of a program called Heritage City Programs. Yeah, a program initiated by Kementerian PUPR and Bumi Pelestarian Pusaka Indonesia since 2012. Yeah, several workshops was organized between 2016 and 2008. Next slide, please. And just last year, interesting action recent project by Jogja Heritage Society, Karya Kreatif Inovatif, uh, Cultural and Natural Mapping of Yogyakarta Historic Urban Landscape funded by Ministry of Cultures. So this project is also an initiative yeah, to implement how, to see how we can implement historic urban landscape. Yeah. And then last slide, Lastly, our Indonesian Ministry of Culture, Nadiem Makarim, gave a remarks during the 10th anniversary of the UNESCO Historic Urban Landscape. And he said that the 10th anniversary of the recommendation historic landscape give is the right moment to develop sustainable cities for the future generations. So hopefully our uh, handbook and also this event can fill this, the, the mission of uh, our culture and also uh, the conservation of our cultural heritage. Thank you, Bu Hasti. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Punto. Thank you very much. And the next is a presentation uh, represents the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands, Peter Timmer and Jacqueline Rosbergen, who will uh, share with us uh, their views about the quick scan uh, methods, the workshops model. Please go ahead, Peter and Jacqueline. Thank you very much, Anissa and Pak Punto, and good morning and afternoon to everyone. Uh, we are pleased to be part of this project and tell you more about the matter we developed. And we in this matter are all the involved partners. Um, and I would like to start this presentation with the goal and scope of the whole quick scan method, as presented in the handbook we are launching today. And halfway, Jacqueline Rosberger will take over, will explain more about the steps of the method and the workshop process. Next, please. The main goal of the whole quick scan method is generating ideas for conservation and sustainable development of historic urban areas and inspire people to become engaged in it. The method is a workshop model and a practical tool based on Hull's way of thinking, new life for historic cities. It covers tangible and intangible heritage and follows the concept of living landscapes. Next, please. The method does not replace UNESCO's Hull approach, which is far more comprehensive in its scope and application. The method focuses on creating an attractive horizon for historic urban sites in a very short period of time. It's an exercise that puts Hull's way of thinking into practice and makes it concrete. And by doing so, hopefully paving the way for implementing the whole approach to work in accordance with its objective. Next, please. So this is what we don't want to achieve with this handbook. A historic urban site put under a bell jar, frozen in time, separated from society and blocked from new developments and a place where urban decay seems inevitable to the lack of life. Next. So this is what we do hope to achieve. Vibrant areas full of life, heritage conservation, adaptive reuse, fostering local traditions and accommodating social needs of the community. These areas have meaning to the local community, whether it's emotional, educational, cultural or socioeconomic. Historic urban districts can play an important role in local society and heritage can serve as an engine to achieve sustainable development. Next, please. But how can this be realized or put into practice? There's no fixed template and urban issues are often complex and difficult to tackle. But it starts by introducing a holistic and interdisciplinary approach. The method in this handbook embraces such an approach. This involves cultural, social, environmental and economic domains and also incorporating a larger context and systems that include the entire city and beyond. Finally, it's important to involve expertise, students in this case, or professionals in the field of architecture, urban planning, landscape architecture, 
history, and if needed, sociology, anthropology, economy, environmental geography, infrastructure, and for example, water management. Next, please. And that brings us to the key principles of the whole quick scan method. Exploration is important for understanding the place, its cultural heritage, challenges and opportunities, and wishes and needs of the local community and government. Converting this into a vision in which heritage is a starting point, an asset for sustainable development, is part of the key principle translation. Inspiration is the main goal of the method and comes around in many ways. For example, presenting proposals in an attractive way and creating awareness, local enthusiasm and commitment. And now I, I would like to give the screen to Jacqueline Rosbergen, who will highlight the steps of the method and the workshop process. Gaba. I believe your sound is still up, Jacqueline. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, besides the, the key principles, the whole quick scan method is based on five steps. Each step is grounded in the outcomes of the previous step. It aims to achieve an integrated understanding of the historic environment in its past and present day context. It covers tangible and intangible elements related to the spatial, functional and cultural development throughout time. A vision has to be formulated based on weak and strong points that are identified. Based on this vision, principles are formulated that can be used as a basis for proposals and ideas for development or redevelopment. This also covers tangible and intangible features, such as functional and spatial elements. The focus can be on conservation and intervention, on development opportunities, on heritage as a catalyst for socio-economic development, on urban design or planning tools, on architecture and landscaping. In this process, physical and non-physical elements serve as sources of inspiration. Please next, Anissa. In the book, every step of the method is written out and contains explanations, practical, practical examples, and examples of questions that contribute to the result of the step. It is written from step one to, please, next, Anissa. Step five. Please, next, Anissa. An important part of the method is the process of the workshop, which is explained in this page. The kick-off meeting at the start with the participants, the government and other stakeholders will create evil involvement and reveal expectations and goals for all involved. A meeting with them all in the middle of the workshop will provide feedback to sharpen the result and their presence at the final presentation will create engagement and commitment. The book also describes the importance of dissemination and what has to be prepared in advance because time is limited during the workshop. Please, next, Anissa. Participation is one of the main issues to make the workshop successful. It takes place during almost all parts of the workshop, namely in the kickoff meeting, during the several steps, the stakeholders meeting, the final presentation and the dissemination. Yes, next, please, Anissa. Participation of people involved in the area, such as the government, NGOs, residents and local entrepreneurs, is crucial to obtain applicable goals. It is their area and together they have to get enthusiastic to get ideas about redevelopment carried out. Therefore, the workshop provides in creating moments to get interaction between the participants of the workshop and the parties involved and the parties with each other. Besides participants of the workshop, go visiting locals to obtain their knowledge and needs and create awareness of the historic urban landscape features in the neighborhood of the locals. Considering residents as experts gains a lot of knowledge and involvement. While working on the spot in a heritage building, participants get inspired and they can taste the atmosphere of the area throughout the workshop period. Besides, locals can be easily involved with ind which indeed happened. Yeah, next, please, Anissa. 
Until now, this method was two times executed live, which you can see here. It created a lot of dynamics during the workshop and with instant result after it, of which one was creating this handbook. It served as an incentive. It encouraged government to prioritize heritage as one of the main topics in the municipality's planning activities. It set up a heritage society and more. All the results of these two experimental gardens, one in Muntok, West Banka, and the other in Banyamasi, South Kalimantan, can be read in these. Oh, next one, please, Anissa. Can be read in these two reports. Now, Professor Kamas Ridwan Kernyuan from the University of Indonesia, who was involved with the workshop Muntok, and Vera Damayanti, who was involved with the workshop Banjamasin, will give a short explanation on these two workshops. Thank you. Please, uh, Professor Dr. Kemas Suidwan Kurniawan from University of Indonesia will share uh, the presentations about case Muntok a case study. Please go ahead, Professor Kemas. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me share screen first. I just continue from Jacqueline and Peter presentations. And this presentation will highlight the applications of historic urban landscape quick scan methods that focus on the city of Muntok. Muntok initially was the capital city of Bangka residence until 1913, and it was also the headquarters of the Dutch tin mining company until the Second World War. Now the city is the capital city of the West Bangka Regency, which is part of the Bangka Bitung province. This regency is located towards the western end of Bangka Island. The total land area is about more than 280,000 hectares with some small surrounding islands. It consists of tropical sandy beach, tropical forest, a 400 meter high hill, tin mining pits and smelter facilities, white pepper plantations, palm oil plantations, multicultural traditions included the influence of Malay, Chinese, European, Arabian, and other ethnic groups that created, created an impressive blending of cultural heritage. The sub-district Muntok, also well known as Muntok, has approximately more than 400 square kilometers with 45,000 inhabitants. Geographically, Muntok is located in a cap in the Western Sea of Bangka Island, which has been the voyage route from Bangka to Sumatra Islands since the period of Palembang Sultanate. Geologically, Bangka Blitung is part of the southern end of the Southern Asian Tin Belt. Muntok experienced vulnerability in its environment, such as illegal tin mining, flooding, deforestation, and combined with the fluctuative fluctuative situations of tin mining were price. Therefore, we need an alternative approach to plan the historic city of Muntok to face the, its future. The questions are, how could Muntok face its challenge and find a way to improve the living environment and bring new life in the town? Is it possible to use heritage as an asset for future development? The RCE, together with Pansumnet, Universitas Indonesia, Universitas Trisakti, and Universitas Medan Area, in cooperation with Bangka, West Bangka Government and Museum Tima Indonesia, examined the whole quick scan by a workshop from 3 until 6 November 2018, given prior to the training. The objective of the workshop was threefold. First, generating knowledge and experience on quick scan for the whole approach. Second, formulating proposals to achieve the city remains and or will sustainability develop to be socio-economically vital, resilient, 
and attractive to reside, work, and recreate, in which heritage is a tangible and intangible asset. And then third, inspire students and the local government, community stakeholders in using heritage as an asset for urban, social, social and cultural developments. The first key of the three elements, explorations, focus on understanding the place, its physical and non-physical, as well as the tangible and intangible heritage features. Muntok was a port town, and it was divided by a river, namely the river of Muntok Tower, that flow from Numbing Hill on the north to Bangka Strait on the southwest. The town topography is quite hilly, in which on the northern part of the plateau is higher than the southern part that directed towards the sea. The thin mining settlement that established since colonial era is located on this northern highland, while the downtown area where the market, Chinese village, and parts of Malay Kampung located on the lower ground. The history in Muntok seems to be part of everyday life of the inhabitants of the city. In a sense, exploring the narrative of the city becomes important. For instance, Muntok becomes an important city that related to the national history, especially through its steam mining activity. Also, during the Second World War and post-independent times, where some leaders of the Republic of Indonesia experienced exile in Burg Hotel Menumbing, and Pesanggarahan Bangka Tin Winning in Muntok. This exploration took time around one and a half days with the methods of included lecturings, data collections, with observation, with interview, documentations, discussion, analysis, synthesis, and presentations, and it involving resource person from local people, mainly elderly people. The exploration began with an assignment as a preparation for the first step of the method, and then continue with analyzing in relation to the historical urban environment, where the character of several distinctive, distinctive areas included ethnic clusters, riverfront, seafront area, and former European company towns. It's included the intangible aspect like a traditional culinary and traditional woven textile activities. To ease this first element in Muntok Hill Quick Scan, mentors and, and students then divided into three subgroups. The, the first subgroups, named subgroup A, focus on narrative of the city, socioculture, intangible aspect, comparison between past and patients. And they found that Muntok has always been attached to the team where trade and commerce industry of white paper was one of the most famous production of the area that now become well known internationally. Muntok is also called Kota Seribu Kue, and also where uh, the place such as Pesanggaran Muntok and Pesanggaran Mumbing were exiled places of two founding fathers of Indonesia, Sukarno and Hatta, as, as well as other leaders. These two places have become a source of Indonesian national history in Muntok. The second group, named subgroup B, focus on morphology and typology of tangible aspects. And they found that the urban layout of Muntok consists of four areas or clusters, including harbor, Chinese cluster, Malay cluster, European cluster. And the, there is a differences in height and sightline, especially, for instance, from seashore to Mingming Hill included then the river plays an important role as an important urban theme. And for the next group, named subgroup C, focus on environmental and landscape. This group find that the lower areas of the town suffer from flooding, and also how the kampungs in the Malay cluster are starts losing their, their identity when adding concrete buildings and or tarmac paving of the area's public and private spaces. This exploration phase then continue with formulations of challenge and opportunity. The challenge included how to use the neglected vacant building, how to the environmental or how the river, uh, to clean the river from the pollution, the mining waste, and how to reconnect the river with the community, and then how to uh, uh, respond to the sustainable growth of tin mining, included the 
the the phenomena of swallow but, but nesting for the economic pragmatism and the opportunity that uh, these works of fun that such as uh, there is a possibility about the potential of the fishery industry to be developed in the area and also with the characteristic of the cultural diversity and distinguished district also tin still as a potential uh, as a touristic product and then there is something maybe can be done with the swallow bird nesting and also about national history and also with the Muntok white paper as well the the exploration then continue with the translation and this is also uh, this is also the 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 difficult uh, part yeah, in in the workshop yeah, included how to uh, uh, formulating uh, a vision and principle translate from the analytical data that has been gathered during the exploration phase in formulating efficiency, the workshop mentors directed students to cluster challenge with content related opportunities. And during this process, mentors provided suggestions for inspiration in order to stimulate discussions. The students were instructed to look at basic principles, both from a functional and spatial perspective, deriving from the vision they developed. And then the, these three groups then reorganize again into two groups group one and group two group one consisted of participants from architecture and history and architectural theory students and group two for, uh, from participant from architecture and landscape student the group one formulating the vision heritage as a catalyst for development and also sustainable community-based touristic development they develop the possible uh, development principle by adapt uh, by applying adaptive reuse for instance for historical buildings and using narrative of Muntok as the source of inspirations the second group formulating the visions giving the refer back to the city and how to redevelop of Sifron and how to redevelop of natural and the green scenery of the Muntok and they formulating the development principles such as improving the quality of the river and surrounding ecosystem quality of life and reviving the historical physical connections and function the developing the old harbor and traditional settlement safeguarding open view at the sea and improving ecosystem sea land and rivers and stop tin mining at the sea this translation phase then continue with inspirations with text time around one and a half day and involving stakeholders from government representation and local people so by working visually with image photos and maps the student then develop an activity that aim to inspire the local community stakeholders and government to develop on top on the final day on the final day of the workshop the student presented their preliminary findings to a small group of representatives from several organizations. And I, we cannot show all the student works and with related to idea and proposal, but there are five idea and proposal. How to develop heritage as a catalyst of development. Now, Bangka, especially Muntok yeah, and Bank West Bangka have more than 20 uh, around 24 uh, structure and building that listed as heritage of west banka and then second industry and community-based tourism now it starts to grow how then some people develop the guest house and then uh, the government also develop the the sea area as the tourist destinations and also now the, there is a plan to to develop the geopark of west banka and then third developing the seafront including the revitalizing the harbor area and fourth giving the refill back to the city how to challenge the owner of the house that located along the river to open the access to the river and then 
the last one is how to respond with the phenomena of the mushrooming the bird nesting by giving the green facade to the, the building and following discussion between student mentors and local stakeholders new additions to the proposal were made including oral history memory map and guidelines enhancing Montauk's natural and historic urban character thank you very much and salam dari Montauk Thank you very much, Pak Kemas. The next is uh, I welcome Vera Damayanti, the lecturer of landscape architecture from uh, Institute Pertanian Bogor or ITB University. Please, Vera, go ahead. You are mute, Vera. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you Ibu Hasi for the time. Good afternoon and good morning everyone. Uh, in this presentation, I would like to share our experience in conducting the HL quick scan method in Banjarmasin, which was done in uh, 2019. Uh, next next uh, slide, please. So I will not uh, explain in detail about applying the method. Instead, I will describe on how the workshop was organized and we will have a look at an example of the participants' uh, working result in response to the method. Next slide, please. So uh, first of all, we'll see the highlight about Banjarmasin cityscape to give us insight about the city. Banjarmasin is located uh, in the south of Kalimantan Island, lay on the, on the east bank of Barito River, about 25 kilometer north of the mouth of the same river. Banjarmasin was established in on 15, 1526, marked by the formation of the Banjarmasin Sultanate. The natural landscape of the city is highly influenced by fluvial terrain with rivers and its back swamps. There are many rivers in big, medium, and small sizes flow through the city, added with numerous man-made canals. That's why Banjarmasin is well known as a thousand river city. With such a long history, the cityscape of Banjarmasin is a result of uh, the interaction between the people and the landscape and have shaped the cultural landscape of Banjarmasin and then form the heritage of the city in the form of natural heritage of rivers and swamps, and diverse tangible and intangible cultural heritage, among others, the famous floating market and riverside settlement or kampongs. These river and kampongs have distinctive architectural typology and cultural value, and it is concerned as an urban landscape character of the city. However, due to the land orientation development during the post-colonial era, had given impact not only on the rivers and canals condition, but also on the existence of the riverside kampong. As an element that characterized the local landscape, the river and kampongs inevitably is a significant part of the historical urban landscape of Banjarmasin. Next slide, please. Now, talking about the workshop of the HOL quick scan method, the initiative was begun when the municipality, via the mayor of Benjamin, requested the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands to have cooperation in the subject of urban historical conservation and development. After it was approved, we set up the local committee, which was involved the Office of Culture and Tourism, University of Lambung Mangkurat, IPB University, and Universitas Trisakti, also assisted by uh, local communities such as Kaki Kota and Forum Komunitas Hijau. Beside representative from the Cultural Heritage Agency and the Organization of Heritage Hands-On. We discussed the problems of the city in the context of historical urban landscape. Some challenges that face in the city are how can the river city maintain its unique character and benefit from it? How can it deal with water management from a macro perspective and urban landscape level, climate adaptation, and sustainable development. The numerous riverside kampongs in particular requires special attention regarding heritage preservation, infrastructural development, legal issue, 
stakeholder cooperation and implementation strategies. We then focus on two topics for the workshop, as you can see here in the slide. First is about river-based river -based urban development, and second is related to the riverside urban revitalization. In the preparation, we plan the venue, the location for the case study, workshop materials, lecturers, and the workshop schedule. And simultaneously, we publish the poster to recruit participants and selected the applicants. Next slide, please. The workshop was conducted at Rumah Anu. So this is a reconstructed old, old buildings in the riverside of Martapura. And the period of workshops was seven days from 27 October until 2 November to, uh, 2019. It had total 36 hours. This is based on the programs, but this is excluding the pre-workshop assignment and one day pre-workshop program. We had 21 participants from South Kalimantan and outside South Kalimantan, consists of 11 students and 10 young professionals with different academic backgrounds, as you can see in the slides. And in this workshop, we divided them into four groups and classified two groups of students and two groups of young professionals. And there, are, there were five mentors involved in this workshop. Next slide, please. The activities during the workshop included pre-workshop assignment, city boot, a city boat tour to give participants insight about the Banjarmasin cityscape, seminar from local experts and lecturers, conducting site survey, interviews with the local people in the selected site of case study, studio work to prepare the result based on each step, and then a participant presenting progress per step, and the workshop involves stakeholders in the process, such as through interviews and stakeholder meeting. And finally, we made report of the workshop. Next slide, please. So in this workshop, we selected four locations for the case study. All are riverside kampongs. First is Kampung Sebrang Masjid, second Kelayan, third Kampung Sungai Jingah, and fourth uh, Pasar Lama Kampung Arab. In choosing the location, we had consulta consultation with the Office of Culture and Tourism who acknowledged the needs of the city related to the heritage city development in the city. Next slide, next slide please. As have been explained before, there are three key elements in the method consists of exploration, translation, and inspiration. To briefly illustrate the implementation of this key element, I will use one of case study, which is Kampung Sungai Cina. Exploration as a process to understand the character of the city was started when the, the participant doing the pre-workshop assignment. So they have knowledge about the city prior to the workshop day. It was also done through the lecturer, uh, given by the local lecturers and mentors. And after all groups explored the historical uh, environment of the city together, each group uh, worked in group to explore the case study. Here are some of uh, results from group three in the analysis of the historical urban environment that covered district transformation to identify kampung layout and typology and narrative of the Sungai Jinga. And this narrative uh, of the kampung was classified into religious aspect, the story of Saudagar Kampung, traditional culinary, and traditional clothes of Sasirangan. And then they continue exploration with identifying uh, opportunities and challenges encountered by the Kampung, as you can see uh, in this table. And then the time to do exploration is about 16 hours or two days. Next, please. After they made exploration of the Kampung, Group 3 tried to formulate vision and general principle within translation process. The vision was defined for a city level, first on the city level, and then developed uh, the, into principle for site level. And in this case study, the group determined the vision into four components, as you can see in the slide. But because of the time limitation in the workshop, the group picked only one vision to be more developed in the next step. So here they uh, 
focus on the uh, river identity and riverside kampung as a key point for development as a starting point to design a program incorporating other elements of their vision. And this was achieved by proposing a heritage tourism program using the kampung narrative as the main source of inspiration. This process took about four hours. Next, please. So the last process is about inspiration where participants providing material of future development that can inspire people in which the future development was derived uh, from, from the principles made before. So all groups transfer their ideas visually through sketches, diagrams, pictures, image references, site plans and section drawings, and also using maps and 3D animation. The groups presented their result in a discussion forum as part of the stakeholder meeting. Participants and stakeholders exchange ideas by which participants receive comments and feedback that were very useful for improving their proposals. And after participants revise the proposal, they prepare final presentation and posters. These activities totally took about 18 hours. Next, please. So as part of inspiration, its group prepare a standing banner poster, which were then displayed in the venue for a couple of weeks for public exhibition. While the mentors put the result of the workshop together in a report, which officially submitted to the municipality. And also it is available online to reach broader audience that hopefully inspired them about how to integrate HOL in the development. Next, please. Here, I would like to share information that during the pandemic, the uh, whole quick scan method was applied uh, through a hybrid method in which the master program of the Architecture Universitas Indonesia in cooperation with the government of DKI Jakarta, conducting the workshop with Pakojan in West Jakarta as the case study. And the workshop was part of the advanced architecture history class. Uh, this report itself is available online in the link. And before I end this presentation, I will uh, I'd like to give credit to the students from the uh, Universitas Indonesia who have been giving technical assistance to this event and certainly uh, thank you to the reviewers and all participants who joined this program. Happy T Teacher's Day for all lecturers who joined today. Next. Once again, thank you for your attention. Back to thank Ibu you. Hasti. Thank you, Ibu Vera. And uh, of course, once again, thank you to all the volunteers who have uh, helped uh, to organize this event. Uh, we have invited uh, three lecturers at, uh, from Indonesia as the viewers of this handbook. Uh, because at the end of the day, this handbook is actually for the Indonesian university lecturers. We would like to encourage them also to organize workshops with their students. And I would like to invite the first reviewer is uh, Dr. Titin uh, Fatima, is a lecturer for, from the Department of Architecture and Engineering University of Talmanegara. Ibu Titin, you yeah, are welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you please. Uh, very good afternoon for the participants from Indonesia, uh, from Indonesia and then good morning uh, for the participants from uh, the Europe. Uh, okay, uh, let me uh, share the screen first, please. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to say, to say uh, thank you uh, to uh, the team that you have uh, chosen me as one of the reviewers for this uh, draft of uh, this uh, book. Uh, and today it is already published and uh, being launched today, so I am very happy to be here. Uh, in this occasion, I would like to uh, show some uh, short notes, yeah, uh, just a short uh, commentary uh, about uh, this book. So uh, I think uh, this book uh, is quite uh, special. I think why? Because uh, it is written by a group of uh, authors that it come, come from uh, 
uh, different countries. It's Indonesia and also uh, the Netherlands. And then it also consists of uh, some uh, different institutions from universities and also uh, some institution like Heritage Hands on Amsterdam and also uh, agency like RCE. And also we can find here uh, the writers also come from a multidisciplinary uh, background and I think uh, this uh, kind of uh, collaborative work can provide some uh, good uh, combination of the knowledge and also uh, the expertise from both Indonesia and also the Netherlands. I think it's very good point of this book. And also we can see uh, in the follow of this book, uh, because I'm a lecturer and uh, this handbook also for the uh, university lecturer. So I would like some uh, comments uh, in the perspective of a lecturer. Uh, if we see the commentars uh, in the follow from uh, Bapak Aris Yunaidi uh, from uh, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology of Republic Indonesia, uh, he mentioned that this handbook offers an interdisciplinary approach that is also aligned with the higher education national policy that's Merdeka uh, Belajar Campus Merdeka, MBKM, that uh, nowadays we already know about it and everybody in the university they forward to provide uh, the new curriculum aligned with uh, this uh, MBKM. Also, uh, this handbook uh, can be a reference uh, for project-based and collaborative learning, so it can give uh, some opportunity to the students and also the lecturers to have uh, more uh, activities like off-campus uh, learning activities. So, uh, this handbook comes from uh, two uh, previous uh, workshops that already mentioned by the authors of uh, previous presentations. It's uh, 2018 in Muntok and also uh, 2019 in Banjarmasin, South Kalimantan. Uh, the result from uh, those uh, two workshops and then uh, improved to the uh, materials for this uh, handbook uh, that already uh, included some uh, institution that I mentioned uh, before. You can see here that uh, the objective of, of this uh, heritage uh, landscape mix is to uh, inspire of we all, yeah, it is a way of thinking into practice and make it uh, concrete. And it also aims to create an attractive horizon for its people to implement the whole of in uh, our ways. Uh, if you see the book after this, maybe uh, you can find uh, the steps uh, by step uh, of this uh, method that we can follow. Step one until step five. And also, it is uh, included uh, with some examples uh, that are very real uh, to be read because it uh, is on uh, the previous uh, two workshops. So we can see every step, it's very detailed, uh, presented uh, with so many uh, examples of maybe data, how to compile, how to analyze, and so on. So I think it's very uh, easy to follow, uh, that uh, maybe most of all the lecturers and students uh, can uh, follow uh, this guidance of this book. Uh, it also uh, consists of uh, some informative uh, contents. Not only the workshop will uh, fix scan methods, but also the whole process uh, how we uh, can conduct uh, this uh, full scan uh, workshop from the preparation and until the dissemination. It also uh, put the pros and cons that we have to notice to, uh, in uh, conducting. I think uh, this handbook provides a concrete uh, practical guidance uh, for university lecturers to carry out uh, historic urban landscape fixed and uh, activities in maybe various uh, heritage areas in Indonesia. And hopefully, it will give a good contribution for the implementation of whole approach in the heritage conservation in Indonesia. And again, congratulations.
reflection for the team. Thank you. I think that's all from me. Thank you, Ibu Titin, uh, for the positive uh, remarks uh, from you as the, the first reviewer. The second reviewer, I would like to invite Ibu Nani Kohdata, is a lecturer of landscape architecture study program, Faculty of Agriculture, Ud Udayana University, Bali. Ibu Nanik, please. Thank you, Ibu Hasti. And good morning and also good after afternoon to everyone. So being honored to be here in this uh, book launching. Um, I'm going to share my insight. I have no presentation PowerPoint to share, but I'm going to share my insight. First, when I was asked, to give a review to this handbook. I was amazed by the title, Who QS, Who Quick Scan? I was thinking like how quick this method can go through the complexity of a culture in a community and how it can um, give an answer to the problems within a community with, a, with um, uh, such a, complexity and it also span uh, within times like then okay I said to Mbak Vera actually just the one who asked me to do this and also it's not just the handbook it's a whole quick scan and also in the time manner I have to review this book it's very quick so okay can I do this job or not so I was challenged by that time I accept the challenge so I going through the book, the handbook, and is uh, I come to very fascinated with the method offered by this book. I realized that the full QS, full quick scan, is uh, has a method that offers more than the uh, the most uh, working framework that has been uh, we may be very familiarized with the. Uh, uh, was that the terms like tangible, intangible, multidisciplines, and also, um, you know, steps that has been mentioned in most of the textbook, in especially in my uh, disciplines, landscape architecture. But after I finished reading all the books, the draft, I I realized that there are some significant. Uh, within this book, this handbook. I have put some notes for myself. The significance of this handbook, first is it, it's uh, hands-on. It's teaching, it's um, giving a ref, uh, idea, give, to bring an idea to the lecturer that this method can be done as a hands-on technique. I would say this technique. And I would consider this method as a working, progress as a working progress in planning, designing, or programming within the community. And it's also, it's open to critics, refinement, and revision at the same time. And it goes along the process, which is really suit with the people, the community, community that is really dynamics, of course. And the third, oh yeah, it's also profit methods and technique that is structured. So for lecturers like me, it's given ease to apply it in terms of times and also meeting session to my students. And the fourth uh, is, okay, this is what I, I recognize from this method. We as a lecturer, I as a lecturer, I'm only a provider and my student is the participants, their users, and also the community who will, who will participate, they are also users. So I'm not the one who is directing them to create something or designing something or do, do things. I just provide the knowledge, maybe like uh, the steps, sort of like that. So this is kind of um, method that I think I would like to apply. At the time I was thinking like that, I so actually at the time I'm planning to, I will ask Bufera to, can you give me this 
book after it's done or can I have an access like that? But I'm glad uh, since from this uh, webinar, I've been, I know that it will publicly uh, access. And also, oh, this one. Another thing it's um, the public involvement, the community involvement, it's kind of different with the, um, the, I, I would use the term old paradigm. It's not just focus group discussion like before, but the involvement is they are providing data, they are providing information, at, and at the same time, they are um, they are giving us opportunity opportunities to criticizing back to what they have provide information to the let's say the students, the planner, the designers. Um, to to formulate a certain plans or design for them. So so this is very interactive. So that that's the good about about this uh, method, this handbook. And the last, I recognize this who the H U R Q S uh, quicksand is somehow in the same page with the postmodern postmodernism paradigm. So it's not talking just about the past, the, the heritage, the, um, that preserving the romantic thinking of um, keeping the past uh, for the, for the, for the, what's that, for the need of uh, showing to the next generation. But also at the same time, I think this provides something, a link a link from the past, present, and also to, to the future, to next generation on how we live, on how we live um, learning from the past. That's what I think this method can cover. And also, as a closing, I feel very honored and lucky to have a chance to read this, this draft, also from the perspective of uh, prospective users, I, I yes, and also lecturers since I'm a lecturer too, and I personally I will use this method, the whole quick scan methods in my class, and I believe for uh, those who have the same passion with the. Uh, urban landscape heritage will find the same uh, value and advantages that offers from this handbook. I think that is my short insight that I can share to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibu Nanik. And uh, yes, it is uh, the handbook is accessible uh, in uh, PDF uh, versions online. And the good news uh, that uh, we published the handbook in two languages, uh, Bahasa Indonesia and also uh, English. Yes. Yes, that's and, even uh, more more helpful to us because yes. we can Although reach sure further that... for our audience, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And uh, the last and uh, the third and the last uh, reviewers is uh, Ibu Dr. Insinyur Nur Hayati, uh, MSJ. Director of Educational Administration and Admissions Management, and also a lecturer of uh, Landscape Architecture Institute Pertanian Bogor or I IPB University. Please, Ibu Nur Hayati, uh, share your views. Thank you, Hasti, for uh, the opportunity. So, uh, and uh, good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nur Hayati, uh, and I will give a short uh, report, short uh, review for the handbook. Can you see the uh, the yes, we can see. Right? Okay, yes. thank you. First of all, I would like to say congratulations to all of the authors and the team for producing this excellent. Uh, handbook and uh, I'm very happy and excited to use it 
and ready to collaborate with all the colleagues uh, regarding our to practice uh, quick scan method uh, of the historic urban landscape. So uh, my review will uh, relate the practice of the <coughs> historic urban landscape uh, quick scan method uh, relating or the opportunity to integrate in MBKM uh, program. <coughs> uh, I think now the MBKM program is uh, like, uh, this is the government higher education uh, policy. So uh, I think all of the universities, uh, lecturers uh, encourage uh, the student to do uh, this activity and also many, uh, <coughs> many like uh, organization, institution, and also uh, company, uh, industry, and so on, also offers uh, uh, this MBKM uh, program. <clears throat> so this handbook, I think uh, all the, uh, the two reviewers, previous, uh, previous reviewers already uh, uh, mentioned about the how excellence of the of this handbook. So one of the best references uh, for the lecturers uh, like me uh, in the uh, relevant fields as uh, practical, comprehensive and actual tools uh, and also uh, use the case study in Indonesia, Muntok and Banjarmasin. This handbook, uh, as uh, Bu Nani says, said, uh, it is easy to adopt and uh, for me, uh, for lecturer, I think all lecturers in Indonesia, we have to compose or to write a semester learning plan. So this method can uh, be included in RPS, semester uh, learning plan. And uh, we still uh, need actually uh, how to assess. So we need uh, an assessment tool uh, and uh, define the learning outcomes uh, for every, uh, maybe each subject in its university use uh, this uh, handbook, I think. And uh, I think we can also discuss about the method of uh, assessment for uh, the student. <coughs> So I think like uh, Butitin, we are all lecturers. So we uh, also interested in this uh, statement of the uh, of Prof. Aris Junaidi in the prologue, right? Uh, uh, the statement uh, that this uh, practice of the quick scan method uh, really align with uh, MBKM uh, program. I think uh, this is also already explained by Bu uh, Titin about the <clears throat> of campus learning, project-based and collaborative uh, learning. And uh, this is for a lecturer uh, also as uh, that in this program, the lecturer as a co-pilot uh, to the student, eh? co-pilot in the creative and innovative learning journey. Uh, of the student. <clears throat> so uh, this is the uh, logo of the MBKM, so Campus Merdeka, uh, Merdeka Belajar, Campus Merdeka, uh, Literary Freedom to Learn and Independent uh, Campus. This program, there are uh, five uh, program or five uh, points, uh, main point, uh, one, automatic accreditation for a uh, study program, two, uh, considering student rights, uh, two, study for uh, three semester outside study program, and three, autonomy to uh, establish study program for qualified universities, and uh, four, freedom for state university to become legal corporation. So uh, related with uh, this topic, uh, I think the the second or the program two point two, student right to study uh, outside the study program outside the campus. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, this uh, practice 
maybe not until uh, three semester, right? But uh, the right is until uh, three semester. It can be only one semester. So uh, this is actually the MBKM uh, activities of campus learning activities. There are nine uh, channels. So one is internship, uh, two teaching at school, uh, three humanity project, uh, four independent project, five entrepreneurial uh, activities, uh, six uh, doing research, uh, seven student exchange or credit earning from other universities, and then uh, six, uh, eight uh, village project and uh, nine different country. I think the uh, whole quick scan method uh, can be applied in the uh, independent project and also, uh, sorry, internship. Yeah? Uh, if the project already exists uh, and, the, and the student can join and follow uh, all the <coughs> uh, activities. Uh, but in my university, in IBB University, uh, this uh, whole uh, quick scan method, I think also uh, can be applied in the student final year uh, project as a part of a final year project uh, as a capstone or a case based or problem based uh, project. Uh, <coughs> To be recognized as uh, MBKM activities, actually, uh, at least achieve or obtain uh, 20 credit units. Uh, <clears throat> it can be fully uh, in, in this type of activities or uh, can be combined or uh, partly and combined with other uh, activities uh, in. Uh, outside campus. And the practice of uh, whole uh, quick scan method, I think, uh, uh, can be uh, as part of MBKM uh, activities because I uh, read in the handbook the case study uh, around uh, uh, take uh, time around 33 uh, and 36 activity hours, uh, it means uh, one week. But uh, as Ibu Vera mentioned, it is not including the preparation, pre workshop, and also maybe self learning. So uh, at least it can be, uh, or it is uh, equal to one credit unit. So one credit unit uh, uh, around 45 activity hours. But I think it is also can be developed into uh, two or three credit units uh, with uh, consider other activities and maybe uh, develop to other uh, activities, for example, more uh, uh, dissemination activities or uh, more implementation in, in specific uh, specific area or aspect and so on. Uh, so it is also need uh, what is the learning outcomes, what is the competencies and the competencies I think not only related with the, uh, the, the field uh, like uh, landscape architecture or urban planning and so on or heritage conservation but also including uh, the soft skill activities like uh, skill of communication, uh, management of activity, time management on teamwork and so on. It can be also uh, count in the uh, activity or can be count or can be, can be considered as uh, competencies. And also uh, how to assess uh, or to evaluate the result uh, of these activities uh, to, to give a grade for the student. <clears throat> uh, and as full uh, MBKM uh, activity, uh, it should be developed in uh, at least 
uh, 20 uh, credit units uh, this equivalent to 90, 900 activity hours so maybe around uh, one semester uh, i think it is not a quick scan method anymore uh, but it can be part of a larger uh, activity i think this uh, uh, quick scan method and the type of activities uh, can be independent project or internship uh, and again what ki what kind or what learning outcomes and competencies uh, maybe the committee uh, or the lecturer can uh, compose the uh, a, a mini curriculum including lectures preparation uh, self-learning, also uh, maybe dissemination or implementation of specific action and writing report, evaluation, and so on for one semester, maybe. <clears throat> so it is a full MBKM program. Sorry. And uh, because this is the activity outside of the pro study program or uh, campus, so the organizer or the committee of the whole project, it should be a collaborative committee. I think like in Banjarmasin or Muntok or Pekojan, it is a good examples. So university or uh, maybe organization uh, or government or uh, the government or institution maybe already have a uh, whole uh, historic urban landscape project so can invite uh, the student to participate <clears throat> and participant participant or actors uh, of course the committee the resource person uh, expert uh, stakeholders of the uh, in the local community uh, or a local area or the in the town and uh, also the mentors, uh, the tutors, and uh, of course the student participant uh, from various fields. So this is because this is the collaborative learning. <clears throat> and then uh, the last is uh, my remarks that this handbook is uh, an excellent handbook for lecturers. And uh, the opportunity is as part of the MBKM activities uh, that need uh, credit unit equivalency, learning outcomes or competencies, and also uh, method of assessment as uh, and uh, can be also as full MBKM activities, but it should be developed uh, until into uh, 220 credit units. So uh, the type of the activities is uh, suitable as independent project or internship activity. And it needs a mini curriculum, I think, uh, for uh, 20 graded units for uh, one semester. I think that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ibu Nur Hayati. I think uh, you are the authority to share uh, these views which now uh, exposing what uh, need uh, to be done and uh, in the implementations of the handbook in the university uh, environment. Thank you very much. And now we are going to have discussions. So I would like uh, to invite uh, the participants who are lecturers probably to uh, respond uh, to the review of Ibu Nur Hayati and other uh, reviewers from Ibu Titin and Ibu Nanik about uh, how do you think so far about the handbook? Uh, please, uh, the participants, uh, the lecturers uh, in this forum, if you would like to comment. Of course, I also welcome all the participants who are not lecturers like me, is I'm a practitioner in the field. So uh, while uh, I give you uh, a while to think about, uh, I would like to thank you uh, Mandarin uh, Guntu uh, who has uh, shared in the chat about uh, his uh, relative's house in Sungai Jingah, Banjarmasin who, uh, who are uh, included uh, in, the, in the workshops. Uh, Gunto, would you like to share something with us? 
Mandain Guntur? Ah, yeah. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you very much. It is very happy for me to following this uh, uh, seminar. Uh, uh, Banjarmasin is a unique university. Uh, I mean, unique, uh, unique city um, because uh, so many uh, people want to know about uh, the historical city because uh, the city of Banjarmasin is not only because we can see right now uh, as a modern city and then uh, collaborated with the local uh, development, but also there is uh, something uh, interesting, not only because uh, the city is a part of Indonesia, but also many uh, uh, other country there is uh, was come to to the uh, to the Banjarmasin actually, not only because our in Indonesia is a part of, as a colony of the uh, uh, East Indies as the first. But also, it is uh, the city is collaborated between the local uh, indigenous uh, belief in in in, the, in Borneo or in Kalimantan. So there is uh, Farah Damanti said that is a uh, uh, Banjarmasin is a thousand uh, river cities. So it is interesting. I know that it is not a uh, uh, holy. Uh, method to the quick scan like this, but also it is uh, give us uh, some uh, uh, picture or the landscape about the urban landscape in Indonesia, not only in Banjarmasin, but also of Indonesia. But it is also uh, give us a sample like uh, city of Palangkaraya, city of Pantiana or city of Samarinda like this. It is a same situation. It is the same landscape like this. So. It is interesting, so I'm happy uh, for today to following this webinar. Thank you. For thank you. For, for thank you. Uh, for this time. Thank you, Pak Mandarin Guntur from uh, Banjarmasin. Uh, I would like to uh, provide opportunity for the lectures in the in the group uh, in the teams uh, of this handbook about, uh, especially about improvement about applications of this handbook. Uh, in the in the university environment, we have three lectures in the group: uh, Punto Wijayanto, Ibu Vera Damayanti, and Professor Kemas Ridwan Kurniawan. Would you, uh, one of you, uh, probably would like to uh, respond to the feedback from the viewers, especially uh, things to improve uh, in the implementations, like Ibu Nur Hayati uh, mentioned? Please welcome one of you. Pak Punto, Ibu Vera, or Pak Kemas? Yes, maybe can my voice be heard? Yes, yeah, it's clear. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Pak Punto and Bu Vera can add something later. But uh, yeah, I, I thank you very much for Ibu Titin, Ibu Nani, and Bu Nurhayati to give very insightful comments for this handbook and thank you very much and I think I totally agree with all of you and there, there are space of improvement for the future yeah because this is the first versions of the handbook that uh, I think it's open yeah to be uh, 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 developed in the future yeah and as myself that I learned a lot from this uh, workshop and making this handbook that uh, working with whole quick scan methods is I think is uh, something new and also when we did it in Muntok this is uh, totally we just blank yeah, about this these tools and Muntok become the first uh, case study that applied for these uh, these methods and uh, I found between Muntok and Banjarmasin and maybe either city that it's a, a customized, uh, this, this, this method is very, very basic, but uh, we can use it according to different kind of the city. Yeah. And also uh, it's a customized, for instance, between Muntok and Banjarmasin, there are uh, a different approach in involving the, the volunteers with this, 
this uh, in these methods. In Muntok, we have only seven students and with different uh, background from architectures, landscape architectures, historians. While in Banjarmasin, maybe Bu Vera will explain later that uh, the variety of uh, uh, volunteers also more, yeah, and there are uh, more places in Banjarmasin that uh, become the, the object of study. So with this kind of the sources and the scope that we would like to scan on the city, we have to be careful first and prepare yeah, at the first how to do this yeah, and which area that we need to, to go. The, the topography and the context on Muntox is very special that we have, uh, we have a river that flowing from the Monumwing Hill to the sea and the city divided into two by this river. And uh, how to do this whole quick scan with this kind of the city. Yeah. So, and with this number of the people, volunteers, and then therefore it is important to connect with the, the, the people who know the, the place very well. Yeah. The place that's uh, they will become the agency for to help us yeah, to understand the the, uh, the city before the workshop can be done. Not only historians, but these persons, I think it's uh, well related to, to the place. Yeah. And in order to do this, uh, the strategy is just looking at the, the points that Moon talks, that the river become the connections, the connecting points that connecting the city with the hill and the sea. So this covering the landscape. So we have a, like an interceptions concept when we did it in Muntok. And this approach a bit different when we we see from uh, Banjarmasin that there are four places yeah, that being object of uh, observations. And another thing that's interesting for me that uh, yes, uh, Nur Hayati talking about MBKM that this is already become our concern as well that when we uh, write this handbook that MBKM is still ongoing yeah and so I'm very interested yeah, uh, to connect it with the MBKM and there are a lot of possibility that it will connect with the uh, Madeka Belajar programs for instance with the independent project yeah, or the research yeah exchange program become because when we did this project that's uh, it's involved uh, people from different backgrounds and this is uh, a good opportunity yeah to to create uh, a program that become a joint programs together with several university and we learn it a lot and we experience uh, this from these two workshops and the other things is uh, yeah regarding the learning outcomes yeah, and how we assess these yeah, students that we we recognize that students learn a lot from this process and the participants the volunteers uh, learn a lot and the thing is uh, they they learn something like uh, collaborations the team works for instance of course beside the the local knowledge that they gather yeah, during the the process and how to deal with the community so this community-based uh, research also involved in this. And a lot of things I think can be assessed in relation in relations to the MBKM learning outcomes. Yeah. Uh, uh, how they 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 come from not from the, the area, but they come from different uh, like Jakarta, Depok, Bogor, and then suddenly they go to a place like uh, Muntok and Banjarmasin and learn something. So this is like uh, they have to do this on site and uh, it's happened. Yeah, they, they got this such of knowledge in the very short of times. I, I agree with uh, Bu Nani. Yeah. This is a quick scan. I'm thinking how quick this process can can be learned by the students yeah but uh, again said because this is collaborations not involving one to uh, one people but the collaboration is uh, a key yeah? uh, to make this these methods uh, very successful 
Okay, so this thank is uh, yeah. my comment and thank you yeah, very much for, you, the, for the for yeah. the very insightful review. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now and also I also would like to uh, mention uh, like Ibu Nanik uh, remind us that uh, this is an ongoing uh, work. Let's say so there are a lot of uh, improvements. Uh, yeah, and uh, Ibu Vera, would you like to have a brief comment before we come to the closing? Okay, uh, thank you so much for the uh, opportunity, Ibu Hasti. Uh, yeah, regarding the comments uh, from uh, all the reviewers, uh, thank you so much. And uh, as pa, pa Kemas already uh, mentioned that this, actually, if, if we see uh, this method, like related to what Ibu Nur Hayati said, if you want to uh, get like two or three, or 20 uh, credit units, uh, we can we can um, modify it instead of the, not the step, but the enrichment content, something like that uh, into uh, the workshop process. Okay. So, yeah. So maybe, uh, I don't think it's a good idea to do it in one semester. It's, it's uh, going to be not quick scan method, <laughs> but perhaps uh, to make it for, uh, two or three credit units that's more possible uh, by make it uh, by add some hours uh, for either for the students or for the uh, delivering the the materials itself but actually uh, what we've written in the handbook it's about 32 to 37 36 hours is just what uh, mentioned in the in the workshop program but in fact, in reality, uh, students working more <laughs> than that hours. <laughs> more, uh, yeah. they, they're working okay. outside the workshop hours. So, but that's, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a possibility to, uh, uh, cre to transform the, the HUL quick scan method into uh, MBKM uh, channel. That's yeah. for me. Thank you, Ibu Fera. Pa Punto, do you have a brief comment about uh, feedbacks from all the reviewers? Yeah, baik, Bu Hasti. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Bu yeah. Hasti. So, first of, first of all, thank you so much for comments from all reviewers. Bu Hasti, eh, Bu Titin, Bu Nadi, Bu Nani, and also Bu Nur Hayati. So, when workshop was conducted, we we don't have yet, yeah, MBKM, yeah. We don't know and we don't imagine that at one day we will have uh, this kind of uh, concept of program. Even when we start to write this book, yeah, we haven't yet started to know about MBKM. But I think naturally we all need collaboration. Yeah. So we cannot just work uh, from silo architecture, working on architecture issue. And we are very happy yeah, to work with other sectors, yeah, history, landscape, and also other departments. And it's not only about uh, relation between universities or study program, but also how we can facilitate students yeah, to interact with co local community, professional, and also stakeholders. And I think they are very happy yeah, to see that the result of the workshop can be very useful yeah, for community. And we are happy yeah, that a uh, lot of uh, friends join this and I hope this book can be useful. Yeah and more universities will join to uh, make use of this book optimally. Thank you, Bu Hasti. Thank you, thank you, Pak Punto. Is there Wasti. anyone, yes? Wasti, saya, Zulfikar, is it okay? <laughs> yes, please, uh, quick, yes, a short uh, comment, please. Okay. And introduce yourself, please. Okay, my name is Zulfikar from Central University, especially from a sector department. And uh, thank you for giving me to give some response, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Pak Kemas and the team is a good uh, approach yeah, for these uh, books. So I think, uh, like uh, Ibu Nukhati said, this is good for MBKM. Like now I'm teaching Mondul Nusantara, so we can uh, introduce to students from other uh, university that come to our university about like uh, Professor Kemas and team uh, doing. So I think for next, is. If this is impossible or not available for uh, other students from other, uh, other university to join the program, I think it is good uh, for, uh, for the student, especially for uh, architecture, history, and others. So it is a good uh, uh, approach, I think. So maybe for next, uh, we want to 
from uh, one famous and other team uh, could uh, inform to our to other universities to join from uh, MBKM. It is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to have someone from Banda Aceh to join uh, the lunch. Fazlul <laughs> is from Banda Aceh. Thank okay. you, uh, probably uh, I will give uh, the screen to uh, one of the representatives of the RCE uh, or the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands to comment. Uh, uh, apologize that I only could give the screen to uh, one opportunity, one of you who will be who will represent uh, to comment, whether Sean Paul Cotton or Jacqueline or Peter Timmer. A very brief comment in the discussions, please, because you are also a part of this uh, endeavor. Maybe Sean Paul, is that an option? Because we, uh, Jacqueline and I are really involved in this yeah. uh, project. Yes, please. Okay, so, well, uh, thank you all for uh, this, uh, uh, this presentation. I uh, truly hope that this will be helpful in uh, Indonesia. And as I see, there is a lot of enthusiasm and there is also still, uh, there's still a lot of options had to further work on. So I, um, uh, I, I hope you will be able had to use this uh, tool, uh, this, this handbook uh, to, to be further utilized for, uh, in the end, uh, getting, the, the, getting a relation between the 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 past the present and the future and i wish you good luck in that thank you thank you Sean paul and also to stay with us uh, in the in the lounge uh, today and we come to the closing of the programs i would like on behalf of uh, the team all the organizing committee i would like uh, to uh, hand over certificates symbolically to the three reviewers the first one, let's see, uh, to Ibu Dr. Insinyur Nur Hayati, uh, MSK, uh, from IPB University. And the second is to Ibu Nani Kohdrata from Udayana University of Bali. And the third, to Ibu Dr. Engineering Titi Fatimah Sajana Technik Master Engineering from University of Tauma Negara. Thank you for your valuable reviewers uh, to all of you. And for all participants, the handbook from now, the English versions, you can download through this uh, link. It's uh, the, uh, the link from uh, Universitas Indonesia. Uh, it is a PDF uh, version and it is free. And the Indonesian version, we are, uh, Indonesian version, we are still working, but uh, we hope that uh, it will not take a long uh, time uh, to be uh, openly accessible as well. For uh, today, it is uh, the English versions to this link. So, and in the chats, uh, uh, there is a link which you can quickly copy and paste uh, before before uh, we close uh, the webinar. Yeah, and uh, okay, the Indonesian version will be available next week. I, uh, I have an update, so it's a good news. And uh, we would like to encourage all of you to try uh, to implement the methods uh, in the workshops uh, with your students. And also don't forget to involve other uh, stakeholders uh, locally, their uh, practitioners, government agencies, or anyone, even private sectors. And if you would like uh, to ask questions, to give feedback, or you need assistance, please contact one of us uh, uh, in, uh, in the universities or even uh, us uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, you can contact us uh, directly uh, by email or uh, by WhatsApp. And I would like uh, to thank uh, all of you uh, to join this lunch uh, two hours uh, fully. Thank you for all your uh, patience to, uh, to all your uh, 
passionate about uh, this uh, HUL and also to all the speakers uh, and to the to the viewers and to the colleagues, uh, fellow uh, team of all this. Thank you, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we will uh, see you again uh, in the updates, in the improve, in the improvement uh, sessions uh, in the near futures. On behalf of all team, uh, I would like to thank you all and uh, wish you all good luck to implement the methods in your uh, university. Thank you. Thank you.